What's up everyone, it's your boy Norrad89 here bringing you another ranking video and you know what time it is. We have had another full year of horror films and today I'm going to go over my 10 favorites from this year along with a couple honorable mentions and what that means is this is just my list, my personal opinion. These are my favorites, you know, the ones that hit the right spot for me for different reasons, you know what I mean, of all kinds of reasons. You know, there's a lot of different horror movies on this list, but like I said, these are the 10 or 12 because I got a couple honorable mentions on here. These are the 12 that really hit hard for me this year. And in terms of horror films, I actually think last year's crop was better. Like if I was to take this list and match it up against my list from last year, I would take last year's horror films or the 2022 horror films over 2023. That's just my opinion. There was some more heavy hitters in 2022, but 2023 did give us some surprising ones towards the end. So let's do this. Roll it. First, let's get the honorable mentions out of the way first. And my first one to bring up is going to be Cobweb. This one stars Lizzie Kaplan, had Anthony Starr in it, who plays Homelander, and also Woody Norman as our young child actor. This one was very much a high elevated film because of the performances. It's quite unique, and I love the first two acts of this movie, and it's got this really dreary kind of atmosphere and kind of quality to it. But when we get to that third act, there's some moments in that third act that kind of hold this out from being, you know, top 10 worthy type material. But this is still, like I said, one that's worth the honorable mention. Next up, we have Knock at the Cabin. This was M. Night Shyamalan's film that came out this year, and they're this 2023 year, and Dave Bautista's performance is just another one. This is another film that has like for me a really good setup and a really good middle act and some really really strong performances led by Dave Batista who is just an absolute gem we're finding out that he has such range but this is another film that for me it kind of knock at the cabin why it's not in the top 10 is it didn't really know how to end in that third act so like I said this is another one kind of similar to Cobweb that they kind of fumbled that ending for me. Now we're here to the top 10 finally, and like I said, these are just my 10. Please let me know down below what is your favorite horror films from this year. And coming in at number 10 spot is going to be the horror film that I actually rewatched the most this year, and it's probably because it is the most fun, but these other horror films above it I like and I think are better horror films than this one. But Cocaine Bear is going to land in at the number 10 spot. This is, was a theater experience. I absolutely enjoyed it, and I watched it six times. Yeah, I think total in one year, I watched Cocaine Bear six times. It's just such a comfortable film to just put on and just have in the background, even when I'm editing or doing things. It's just like such an easy watch. And like I just showed my, I showed my mom, I showed my kids. Like it's just one of those films, man, that just like it, it kept eating me up and taking me in. And I just wanted to watch it more and more and more. So yeah, Cocaine Bear, I totally fell for that film this year. And is definitely one of my favorite kind of crazy animal films out there. So rolling in at our number nine spot is going to be The Angry Black Girl and Her Monster. And this is a re imagining or a retelling of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein but a more modern version it has a very fa fantastic young black actress that I think is phenomenal and the directorial debut of the first time ever director this movie and it was so good it's right up my alley it's got sci-fi vibes and it actually has some really deep character moments in it and some dark horror moments in it so that's what I really appreciated is that this film takes itself seriously is there a lot in it and it's jumbled up a little bit not all of it kind of gets flushed out correctly but for being a first-time director and like I said having these fantastic characters in it this story I was so enthralled with it so yeah this totally deserves the number nine spot on my list the angry black girl and her monster Coming in at our number eight spot, this one was actually a little bit higher up, but then more films started to come out, and then certain things came out about the news of the next installment, Scream 7, and the way Spyglass kind of handled things, so Scream 6 is landing in at our number eight spot. It's still a really good, solid horror film. I really enjoyed the slasher, but this is one kind of similar to Cobweb and Knock at the Cabin. I did not like the ending third act like this one has one of my least favorite killer reveals in it 
but has one of my favorite ghost face performances in terms of throughout the film and stuff. And it has really strong performances by Jenna Ortega, Melissa Barrera, the core four. I was totally there for it. So Scream 6 has a lot to love about it. The New York setting, they really, really utilize that setting. So yeah, Scream 6 is still a very solid entry in the franchise, but like one that kind of slipped down my list in terms of the horror films throughout this year because of, you know, Spyglass and what they're doing with Scream 7 and now that I, we have no idea who probably not going to get no resolution to these characters or anything like that so yeah for me scream six is going to sit here comfortable at this number eight spot Coming in at number seven is our Kevin Williamson slasher film that came out on Peacock. Yeah, I believe it was released on Peacock this year, and it's called Sick, and I had a lot of fun with this one. This one really utilizes the whole COVID background, and to me is an example of one of those films that you're going to be able to pinpoint the era and time this came out. Like, people will watch this film 20 plus years from now and they're going to be like oh this is a movie from exactly that time that era i like the characters this is a very blissful fast i believe an hour and 30 minutes so it's a really fresh quick watch and that's what i adore about it and it's a slasher film so it caters to my slasher needs and at our number six spot we have eli roth's thanksgiving and this one really was quite the treat i really wanted this i thought this was going to be the number one of the year when i was thinking about it and i knew what else was coming out this year in films and horror films i really thought thanksgiving was probably going to be at the top of the list but uh, number six is still a very solid spot this is a really good slasher with a cool creative design for the killer that i like the pilgrim design for john carver and man the kills in here are off the charts it's really gory it's just eli roth going to the fullest of eli roth and i had quite a freaking fun time with this film so thanksgiving sliding in at this number six spot totally totally worth the watch and like i said one of my favorite horror films of this year now we're here at the top five and before we get down to that please drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel that definitely helps out and these top five are the ones that i probably these are the ones that i rewatched the most this year and also the ones like i said i gave the highest rating none of them i gave a five star to no horror films that came out this year i gave a five star to the highest rated one on here is a four and a half star i got two four and a half stars on here i think so yes let's discuss these five movies and opening us up at the number five spot is going to be when evil lurks and i know this one kind of came out of nowhere and surprised everyone this one was quite the treat as well like man a gory deep freaking a nihilistic movie this is definitely not a fun movie i would say in terms of tone wise this is probably like the darkest deepest tone movie on this list and one that's going to kind of really get down into you and sink into you but i like the way that we go about a new way of going about a possession movie you know what i mean because possession movies they get recycled and become very redundant because we see them done over and over and over again but when evil lurks found a way to find a new niche and create a universe that they can do other movies about this like they can do movies in the same universe that are prequels to uh, like some of the characters and like talk about what you know the history of them but also do a sequel to it so i'm very excited about this one and i loved it like for real it was quite the ride and has some really good jump scares in it as well that got my wife and my kids like my daughter she and my wife jumped right away when they got to a certain jump scare i know you all know what i'm talking about now here at the number four spot we have dark harvest and this is a fantasy horror film that me like or for me just came out of nowhere and this was one that was like small little horror community people like in the community of the horror people that i follow on twitter and you know facebook and stuff i seen just a couple people here and there talking about it really hyping it up saying like why is no one talking about this movie and then like 30 minutes into this movie, I was just falling in love with it. It really is this cool fantasy horror story that takes place in the 60s. So it's a period piece setting. It's got some really fun young characters in it. And I like the fantastical story element of it. You know, this is one that for me, in terms of the atmosphere, the aesthetic and the story, it, that's why it's so high up here at this number four spot is because those three reasons i really adored all those things about this film now we're here at the bronze medal the number three spot and this was hard those top three were pretty hard to nail down and this number three one i really adore like i watched i rewatched this one again recently and it's gonna be influencer a shutter original and influencer man just 
Oh, was one that came out earlier in the year and is probably my favorite soundtrack, I want to say, out of all the movies on these lists, on this list. This one's my favorite, like, soundtrack, my favorite music to the movie, and Cassandra Nod. This is actually, I believe, her first actor debut or actress debut, and she's our femme fatale in here, and it's just fantastic. And this is another film, too, influencer that's going to be kind of, like, sick. You're going to be able to pinpoint the era the time this film came out because it focuses a lot on technology, a lot on social media, things that could happen like the fear of meeting other people overseas, like when you meet someone in a strange country, like can you really trust them and like what it's like, even if it's a woman and a woman, like like for real, you're so easy to just maybe let them in because it's another female, but man, like I said, Cassandra Nod is a fantastic femme fatale in here. Her name was, C her name, her character name is CW, but man, influencer i highly recommend this one if you haven't seen this one like i said because it came out earlier in the year i believe this one came out in like february or march or something like that so i highly recommend going out to check this one out because you won't forget it now getting the silver medal the number two spot is gonna be evil dead rise and if you were to ask me at the beginning of the year of 2023 what i thought the number one horror film of the year was going to be i would have told you it was going to be evil dead rise this is one that i've been anticipating for a couple years now was eagerly waiting for it we were supposed to get this in september of 2022 but because it did so good on screenings and there's so good buzz about this film they pushed it back and they released it in theaters and man this was a really fun, one of my favorite theater watches this year and a film that I watched probably, I think I watched this one three times, Evil Dead Rise. I watched this one three times so far and it's just so fun. It's a bombastic ride. It's kind of a cross between Evil Dead 2013 and a little bit of Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn. It's like a little bit of mix of both of those flavors and stuff. And there's still things I didn't like about this film. Like I... This is Evil Dead Rise is the prime example of a horror film that you kind of had just have to realize that characters are going to do stupid shit and you just have to acknowledge that fact and accept it. And that's one thing that kind of bothers me. But as I watched it on that third watch, Evil Dead Rise, that third rewatch, I was like, I was a little bit more comfortable with it and a little bit more accepting of it, you know what I mean? Because I just took it for the ride that I wanted to be on. So Evil Dead Rise, very comfortable here at this number two spot in the silver medal. But there has to be a number one, a top dog, the gold medal, the crown jewel champion of horror films this year. And like I said, four and a half stars. I didn't give this one a five stars. I still don't think this is a perfect film. But man, this was one that just swept the box office. It set box office records and basically wiped the floor with like 90% of the movies that came out this year. And it's Godzilla minus one. And yes, Godzilla minus one. I know some people are like, what's, what's going on? And yes, this is a horror film. Gojira, that original Godzilla film, has its roots in horror. It's a creature flick. It's a monster flick. And Godzilla has never been as terrifying and so beautiful to look at as in this movie. This is one of the best Godzilla movies that has ever touched this planet Earth that has really emotional, gripping characters, a really good story that's rooted in like tragedy and getting through, you know, after the aftermath of war and dealing with the loss of, you know, other people and also dealing with, you know, one's inner turmoil, you know what I mean? When you fail at a task, you know what I mean? And having to rise up and, you know, come to the moment and finish the job. Like, yes, this is a really good film. And Godzilla Minus One, like I said, one that I highly recommend and that just, like I said, swept the box office, broke records. And like for being only a $15 million film, I think there was like 15 or $16 million they spent on this movie. Holy crap. It looks freaking fantastic and like I said I had real there's a lot of emotional moments I had you know tears welling up in my eyes the sound design and sound effects are fantastic like and like I said the characters you actually enjoy and feel for these characters so when there's horrible things happening like you care about them and you're like damn you want them to succeed against Godzilla which is a rarity for me because I'm usually very much on Godzilla's side all the time but this is one where you like you end up rooting for the human characters so I hope you guys enjoyed this list and this ranking video of these honorable mentions and these 10 horror films that are my 10 my favorite from this year yes I didn't see every horror film or anything like that there's a lot of others that I did miss out on but 
these were the ones that really hit the mark for me and really stood out. Please let me know down in the comments section what are some of your favorite horror films from 2023. I would love to discuss down below from you and be sure to share this video. That definitely helps out the channel. And like I said, like, subscribe, all that jazz. But most importantly, you know what it is. Have a safe and happy day. Peace out.